My trim command is used to trim objects to the edges of other objects, and my extend command is used to extend objects to the edges of other objects. Both of these commands require that we choose a boundary edge to either trim to or extend to. Let's start by looking at our trim command. I can get this command from the tool panel. Um, I can enter it from the keyboard as trim, or I can use its keyboard alias of tr, enter, to begin the trim command. And the first thing it wants me to do, if I look at my settings down here in the command line, um, it says that projection equals UCS and edge equals none. I select my cutting edges. And so I have to select a boundary that will act as the cutting edge of my trim. So in the case of this, let's look at this object right here. I want to trim off the ends of these little lines. So the first thing I have to do is click on this line to act as a boundary. And then I'll hit enter. Um, and now it says uh, to select the objects that I'm going to trim. So if I wanted to trim these objects off, I would click on this side of the line. And you notice that it's trimmed back to meet that line. So if I wanted to trim off this side of the line, I would click it on this side and it would trim it back to meet that boundary edge. One thing that needs to be clear about how trim operates, if I go on this side, you see this small line segment that's left that meets the boundary edge. If I click on that to trim it, nothing happens. Trim does not act as an erase command. If there's only one line segment, and it merely touches the boundary edge or the cutting edge, it's not going to be uh, erased. I do have an erase command available, so I can right click the mouse and on my shortcut menu you'll find erase that you can use. And you can select objects, then hit enter or right click, and it carries out that uh, erase command and you notice that it doesn't interrupt my trim command. So my trim command uh, can evoke a race and it acts transparently. Let's look at a situation where I choose more than one cutting edge. I'll choose trim and I'm going to choose this line and the circle as being the cutting edge and I'll hit enter to end my selection. If I wanted to trim this line for example, I can click on this side and it trims it to this boundary edge. If I click uh, over here inside the circle, you notice it trims it back to the boundary edge of the circle. Once those trims are made, I can't get rid of that middle part by using the trim command. That would have to be erased. So the order that you choose the objects is important. For example, if I came down here, if I wanted to get rid of this side, this line, and I chose the middle, um, I've trimmed this back to this boundary edge, but I've left this segment inside the circle and I can't necessarily erase that uh, right off. I'm going to undo and you'll notice that it will undo the last trim that I, that I made so that I can do it again. This time I'm going to start over here and I would have to make those two trims uh, and that doesn't leave any pieces that still need to be erased. Another option that I have when I choose my trim command is you'll notice that on the command line down here select objects or in brackets it says select all. So if I hit enter on the keyboard without selecting any boundary edge or cutting edge then every line becomes a cutting edge. That means that whenever I click on a line it's going to be trimmed back to the boundary of any other object that it encounters. So with everything as a cutting edge then every intersection becomes the point at which an object will be trimmed. The extend command works in a similar manner to trim. I can get it from my tool panel. I can use the keyboard entry extend or use its alias of ex to start my extend command. Looking down here on the command line you'll notice it looks exactly the same as trim. So if I hit the uh, enter or the space bar, I've selected everything to be a boundary edge. Now with extend, 
it's just the opposite. If I wanted this line to extend to meet this line, say I wanted to make this into a nice neat rectangle, I can click on this line and it will extend to the boundary edge or to the next line that it encounters. If I click it on this side, it's going to extend that line until it finds a boundary edge. I'm going to undo that one. And one of the things that happens is that trim and extend work together. Uh, because the, they both work off of boundary edges, if I hold down the shift button while I'm using, I'm, I'm currently in extend, I hold down the shift button and it becomes trim. So by using the shift button as a toggle, I can move back and forth between my extend and trim commands and use them both at the same time, no matter which command I have currently active. Let's look at another situation. In this situation I want to trim off multiple lines. In fact I want to trim them off on three sides. So I'm going to get my trim command and I'll just hit enter to let everything be a cutting edge. And I could trim these off one at a time by clicking, but I'd like to find a faster method, so if I right-click the mouse and look at my shortcut menu, I have fence as being one of my selection options. By using fence, I can draw a fence line that crosses the objects that I want trimmed. Here I've drawn one line that crosses those three objects, and when I hit enter, uh, it selects them and the trim is made. Now you notice this doesn't end my trim command. I can continue now. Um, but let's look at fence again. If I invoke fence, I can draw more than one line. I'm going to draw a line and turn it across all of these objects. Hit enter and I can trim them all at once. So fence can be used to uh, speed up your selection. Let's look at how my extend command would work with uh, arcs. If I uh, choose my extend command and I'm going to hit enter to let all the objects be boundary edges and I click on this arc, you'll notice that nothing happens and that's because the arc cannot find, find a boundary object uh, in its path when it's extended. You can't extend an arc back into a circle. Um, we have a way to do that, which we'll look at later. But if I do have an arc that has a boundary edge uh, within its projected extension, then if I click on the line, it will extend the arc uh, with the same radius to find that boundary edge. I'm going to go undo and take that one off. If I were to click on this, it will extend around until it finds that boundary edge. So that's the way that we can work with arcs. Uh, using our extend command. Another option that I have when working with extend or trim and setting my boundaries or cutting edges is my edge command. Here's a situation where I have this rectangle. I would like these lines that are here to be extended and trimmed so they line up with the top and bottom of this rectangle. I'm going to choose um, my trim command and I'll choose the top of this rectangle and the bottom of this rectangle as my boundary or cutting edges. And I'm going to uh, ex use an option on my uh, shortcut menu called edge. And down here on the command line it says enter an implied edge extension mode uh, and the default is no extend and I want to turn on extend so I'm going to enter E from the keyboard and now this will imp project implied uh, edges so this cutting edge is going to to be extend an imaginary line out and I can use that as an implied uh, cutting edge so if I click on this end of the line you'll notice that it's trimmed back to that implied intersection I can trim this one, I can trim trim these back, and now these are aligned with my boundary or cutting edges. And I can also use the shift command to extend these. I have to uh, click
click on the end of the line that needs to be extended, but I can then trim and extend to meet those boundaries without having to draw any extra lines. I'm going to end that command and what you need to keep in mind is that now that's been turned on, it's going to stay on. So I suggest that you go back to the edge command and you notice that extend is now on and hit N, enter, and you turn off that option. If you leave the extend on, you can imagine what happens every time you uh, do a select all and you're trimming and every edge is, is uh, projecting an implied boundary, uh, you end up with uh, a lot of cutting edges to deal with. That's why the default is to keep that uh, turned off.